with the coaches. Amen. And we're happy for all of you all that are here. We've come here to praise and to magnify the name of the Lord. And I want everyone, I want everyone, listen, we don't come here to be spectators. No, we come here to be worshipers. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise you the Lord. And we praise him with the clapping of our hands and with the opening of our mouths to sing and to rejoice. We pat our feet. Amen. We do all of that in honor of the great God that we serve. At this time, the praise team is going to come and lead us in worship and praise. And afterwards, the Elder Roscoe Green is going to lead us in prayer. Say amen for the praise team. Come on, say amen again. Has the Lord been good to you? I want to ask that question again. Has God been good to you? I don't know if you realize it, but so many things have been happening over the last few weeks, over the last few months, and we must take inventory and realize that God is good to us. The fact that we're sitting in these pews, the fact that we're able to use the activities of our limb declares that God is good. So this song just simply says, thank you for another chance to say yes. God has given us another chance to say yes to his will, yes to his word, yes to his way. Let's thank him for another chance to say yes. If you will, those of you who feel comfortable enough, join us by standing on your feet if you feel comfortable sitting down. That's fine, but you know how we do it here. Let's praise and magnify the name of the Lord.
yes, yes, Lord. For having the usher in a spirit of thanksgiving, a spirit of praise, a spirit of worship. Anybody say yes in this morning? How many of you can say yes to the Lord on this morning? Come on, I need some, I need some witness in here this morning. I need somebody to feel like the Lord has done something for you. If God has done anything for you this morning, you need to say yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Lord, I pray you today. Come to magnify you today. Come to lift you up today. In the head content of the name of Jesus. Where you're standing today, one of those under the sound of my voice, just tell him yes on this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, I will, Lord. Lord God, we thank you right now for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. And we thank you, dear Lord, for all the things that you've done for us. And I want you to know that we come down to, Lord, not to bow for shape, form, or fashion, but we come with a sincere desire to please you. We come to magnify and to edify your name. We want to lift you up in praise. I got some help here this morning. We want to thank you, Lord, for your work us up on this morning and your starters on our way. And we say thank you, Lord. We praise you. We elevate your name, Lord. Thank Thank you, Jesus, for all of those that are under the sound of my voice. Lord, we come with triumph on this morning. We come, oh God, because you allowed us to walk into this place. And most of us walked in on our own free will today, Lord. We have a will and determination to please you. We want to magnify your holy name, Lord. Bless in this place, Lord. We need a mighty move from you today, Lord. We need you to move in this place today, Lord. Like never before, Lord. Come in the room today, Lord. Lord, bless right now, Lord. Lord, bless right now. Somebody needs a healing today. Somebody needs deliverance today. Somebody just needs a touch from you today, Lord. And oh God, we know that you got up with all power in your hands. And we come to praise and just to magnify you and just say thank you. And we say yes to your will. Yes to your way. Oh God, we come to praise you on this morning, Lord, and look on us today. Somebody standing in the need of, of a blessing. And we know that you're a miracle working God. Lord, send a miracle this way. Right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, move on this congregation today, Lord. Lord, we pray. We know that you're not a respected a person, but we ask dear Lord that you look on our leader on today. We want you to bless him today, Lord. Strengthen him today. In the name of Jesus, bless in a special way today, Lord. Look on the first lady today, Lord. Bless her today, Lord. Let us continue to be a great help me today, Lord. We thank you for her today, Lord. We thank you for every missionary that's assembled here today, Lord. Every mother that's here on today, Lord. Look on them one by one, name by name, and face by face. Write their names in the book of the Lamb books today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, look on the ushers today, Lord. Look on the choir members today, Lord. Bless the orchestra on this morning. Move in this place, Lord. Lord, it's not all oh, do it right now. Lord, I feel a move in this way. I feel your help today, Lord. I feel your strength coming on today, Lord. And oh God, we are praying right now. We pray for the sick and the afflicted. Those, Lord, that are having problems today, Lord. Those that have ele elements in the body today, Lord. We know that you are a doctor that has never lost a case. We want you to bless him today, Lord. Strict him and touch him in the name of Jesus. Move today, Lord, in the hospital rooms, in the convalescent center today, Lord. Oh, God, we need a blessing. We need a healing today, Lord. And, Lord, God, look on those that are home today, Lord. Those that are on their way, Lord, could not make it. We need you to bless them today, Lord. And wherever they are listening by way of Facebook today, Lord, or Zoom, or whatever apparatus that may be today, Lord, we want you to just let them touch that device today, Lord. We want you to sit healing. We know it's not in the device, Lord, but we know that your power reigns on high today, Lord. Bless the Lord in a special way, Lord. And we'll be so careful, dear Lord. Look on those, Lord, that are in the war-torn countries today, Lord. Those that are fighting battles today, Lord. The mothers and the fathers and children today, Lord. That are up against the wall today. Bless them in a special way today, Lord. Look on this country today, Lord. Look on their yeah. leadership today. Here come it. Oh, do it today, Lord. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give you the glory. We'll give you all the honor and praise. We ask it in Jesus' name. Let us all say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And amen. I bless you very much, Lord. Stand for a moment for the reading of the word. If you will, just for a moment. Amen. Brother, the 
brotherly unity. Psalms 133 in its entirety. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of harmony, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, but there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Come on and clap your hands and give God the praise and give him the glory. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. Again, we'll pray for the blessings of the Lord. Yes, sir. And we're so happy, amen, that God has given us this opportunity to praise and to magnify the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. How do you know that God is good? Yes. And he's good when? All the time. He's good all the time. When you look at all the things that are happening, did you all notice those floods yes, sir. that went through Kentucky? That's right. And I think the death count, the last that I heard was 39. Uh -huh. That could have been us. Yes. We're here in the Mississippi Delta. We have, I know we got the levee system, but don't put your trust in the levee. Amen. A few years ago, we were kind of wondering uh, would the levees break? There was so much pressure, the water was actually seeping under the levee. We got quite concerned. My next door neighbor came to me and said, Reverend, say, do you have flood insurance in your house? I said, no, don't have it. He didn't have it. He was quite concerned. I said, then I put flood insurance on the house, y'all. Amen. Amen. Because we can't put our confidence in the levee. Yes. But our hope is in the Lord. And I rejoice this morning and praise him for his keeping power. Yeah. Amen? Amen? For his arms of protection. Yeah. Not only the thing that can tell you, but worldwide we see so many things. And a lot of times we want to complain about rain. We may not have the best of many things that other people, other people may have. But one thing about it, God has been good to rain. Yeah. I say God has been good to rain. And I praise him for his blessings. I want you to join in with the praise team. Don't just sit there, but clap your hands. Sing with them as we praise and honor the Lord on today. Say amen again. Amen. We are especially excited to have Coach Jones, Coach Johnson, and Coach McCray, along with the Greenville High School football team this morning. We want you to know that we're excited to have you here. We're so glad to have you here. But we also want you to know that you are not here by chance. But God has blessed you to be here this morning and he has a word for you. So we want you to feel at home. You don't have to sit back. If you want to clap your hands, you can clap your hands. If you want to pat your feet, you can pat your feet. If you want to stand, you can stand. We want you to be comfortable and we want you to feel at home. You are welcome today. Amen. All right, who are you chasing today? The praise team is coming to let you know we are God chasers. We love him and we'll chase him forever.
you know it's nobody but God who is pulling you through. Sometimes in this life, we're going to have problems. We're going to have challenges. But as long as God has promised to never leave me alone and to pull me through any and everything I have to encounter, everything is all right with me. Come on, put your hands together. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you know that God has been pulling you through.
you're glad that it's the Lord who pull you through. If you know it was the Lord who pull you through, come on and just, just praise and worship him for a moment. Nobody but you, Lord. Come on, praise him right now. It was you, Lord, who pulled me through. When I was down and out, you pulled me through. When I didn't know what to do, you pulled me some countries who are privileged and they are allowed to gather but they don't have the facilities that we have. Amen. The bishop Sam Rand Paul was with us a few years ago from India and uh, he said that you're blessed to have the cushion pews and carpet on the floor. He said I have had 
the times where I preached to people in India on the outside in the rain. I said the folks stood up three hours to hear preach in the rain. And here we have all the comforts of life. It look like we can't hardly make it to church. I'm just trying to show you how good God has been to you. Yes, Amen. And so he deserves the praise. He deserves the glory. Why don't everybody say amen again? Amen. Amen. We're so grateful for all of you that are here. God bless the elder Roscoe Green. God bless you. We thank God for our first lady, our deacons, amen. the mothers of God. These missionaries are here on today. We're grateful for them. And to all of you who are visited with us, certainly to the Greenville High School football team, their coaches. It's just a pleasure to have uh, this sizable group of young men with us on today. We're happy to have you. I, yes, that's us right. Give a round of applause. So many times uh, people can be critical of young people and young men, and, but when they're doing something that is good, and church is a good thing, and I'm sure there's some other good things that, that can be spoken of them, we ought to certainly commend our young people when they're doing something that's good. Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. I think we have some technical problems today, and so we won't have the scriptures on the screen. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, and if you don't, I uh, certainly want you to hear and listen to the reading of the scriptures today. Uh, it's good to have the electronics, technology, sometimes technology will put you down. That's funny. <laughs> And so I, I've got Bibles. I've probably got two or three, well, four on my cell phone. But I still like to have old-fashioned with me. And so I bring my Bible to church. If you will stand with us as we read uh, from Second Chronicles chapter third, let's stand together as we read the Word of the Lord. Second Chronicles uh, chapter thirty. Uh, there are a lot of scriptures I need to read, but I had to cut this down for time's sake. So just follow me, because we're going to skip around in this chapter. Second Chronicles chapter 30, beginning with verse 1. The Bible says, And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. But the king had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to, to keep the Passover in the second month. Skip down to verse 6, if you will. Verse 6 says, So the post went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah. And according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, Turn again. Notice what he said. Turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. Verse 7. And be not like your fathers, and like your brethren, which transpassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation as ye see. Now, but be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield, yield yourselves. Look what he says. But yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Now the last part of this read, go down to verse 17. But there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore the Levites had the charge for the killing of the Passovers, for every one that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar, Zebulon, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover. Otherwise, it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon everyone. Mm -hmm. And our final verse, That prepareth his heart to seek God. 
the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. You may be seated. God bless the reading of the word. Notice verse 19 that says that preparing his heart. In other words, the people had prepared their hearts to seek God. Yes. I want to use for a subject today, my subject being, what happens when you seek the Lord? What happens when you seek the Lord? Can you say amen? amen. Come on, everybody, say amen. amen. Allow me for a moment to give the background to this lesson. You will find in this uh, particular writing that the king desired to reinstitute the Passover. Passover was that great and important feast of Israel that had not been celebrated in all of Israel since the days of King Solomon. You'll find that in one of the verses we didn't read, verse 26. And so here comes King Hezekiah, who was a righteous king because many of the kings had not been what you would call righteous. He comes with a time of reforms. And he desired to correct this problem of not celebrating the Passover. Now, somebody might say, why is that so important? Let me say this. Anything that God commands you to do, whether or not you understand it, it is a serious matter and it is important. It was God who commanded the Israelites to do what? To celebrate the Passover. And notice what I said just a moment ago, that for many years, they had not done so. And, in, 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 and because they had not done so, they actually had disobeyed the command of the Lord. Not only had they uh, neglected the Passover, but they had neglected so many other things, amen, that God had commanded. And it caused the wrath of God. To be poured out on them. I want to get to that in a moment because it's important to know that God is a person. Y'all can say amen. amen. He's a real person. And just like you have emotions and feelings, God has emotions and feelings. Listen, this uh, celebration this morning, this time of worship. I certainly hope that God has accepted our time of worship. And when he accepts our worship, it makes God glad. It makes him happy. Come on, y'all. But on the other hand, you can do some things to anger God. And let me tell you this. Uh, you, you really don't want to anger God because when you anger him, it can cause his wrath. His destruction and his punishment to be poured out on you. I don't know about you, but I want to be on the good side of God. What about amen. you? Amen. Come on and say amen. I better yet, lift your hand and say, Lord, have your way. Come on and say, Lord, have your way. Now, I, I want you to understand some things that Hezekiah was facing. And, and, and those that have been in Sunday school Bible class, you even heard me mention this this morning. The Jewish nation of Israel had been split for a number of years. So there were two Jewish nations. There, there was the northern kingdom that commonly the Bible calls Israel. And then there's the southern kingdom that was called Judah. Now King Hezekiah was the king over Judah. He really did not have authority over the northern half, which has been called Israel. But let me point this out as well. The northern half of, of the Jewish uh, kingdom, Israel, had been disbanded under the control of the Assyrians. The Assyrians had come in, invaded, not only invaded, but they had conquered the people. The folks were now were scattered, some of everywhere, all over the place, all over what we call the Middle East, maybe parts of Asia and Europe. 
And, and so as Hezekiah began to reform the southern half of Judah, he remembers that I've got some brothers and sisters who live across the border, who are living in what had been called Israel, that was now a part of the Assyrian Empire. And if those folks would come and join us, amen, together, together we can worship and praise God and seek those things to please the Lord. Thank Hezekiah had in mind how I want to please the Lord. That's what I've been working on the last few Sundays. And so he decides that we together will seek the Lord that we may please him. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So King Hezekiah, I'm, I'm getting the background. I'm all, almost out of the background. But here, King Hezekiah, he sends letters throughout his part of the empire that he's over. He sends letter in, in letters into the northern kingdom inviting those Jews who were yet living there because when the Assyrians came in, those I said had scattered people, they had been conquering nations all around. And what they would do, they would displace you. They would take uh, some of the folks in other lands and bring it to the new conquered land. And folks in the new conquered lands, they would do what? They would take them into other places. And what was going on, you had a remnant. We read it in the scripture. A small group of, uh, of Israelites who were yet there. Those who were poor. The underclass. Those who were downtrodden. They left them there to be caretakers. But notice what Hezekiah says in verse 6 again. We read it. Ye children of Israel, he's speaking to those folks who, amen, who had been conquered, those people who were down and out, those people in the northern kingdom. He said, you children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped yes. out of the hand of the Assyrian king. I just told you the Assyrians had done what? Scattered the people. And not only had they scattered the people in the northern half, they had destroyed many of their cities, they destroyed farmland. They killed a number of people. Others were carried off as slaves in a foreign land. So Hezekiah made an appeal to this small remnant, come to Jerusalem. Let's celebrate the Passover as God has commanded us. This appeal uh, was really made that the people would seek the Lord, that they be recommitted. In other words, get your life in order. Get your life in order according to God's word. Come on and let's get together that we may serve the Lord, that we may please the Lord, that we have God's favor in our lives. So he made the appeal. You can clearly see this in verse 10. But Hezekiah said, Now it is in my heart to make a covenant. Covenant is an agreement with the Lord God of Israel. Look, listen to this. I hope y'all are paying attention because here's something important. That his fierce wrath, that's his anger, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. Did, did you all see this? His, he didn't just say wrath. But he said what? His fierce wrath. Do you all really understand that when God gets angry, that he's really upset and that he's really angry? I want y'all to look at just, well, I'm trying to get y'all to really see what it means when God is angry. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 32 and 22, and it's speaking of God's anger here. He said, for a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with an increase and set fire on the, on the foundations of the mountain. God is saying here, in other words, that my anger is ignited. And when it is ignited, it blazes as a fire that burns all the way down to the lowest of hell. You know, hell is a place of fire. It is what? It is a place of torment. 
God's anger is ignited as a fire that goes to the lowest of hell. That seems to tell me that there are certain parts of hell that's worse than the other parts. Now, if you go there, it won't matter which part you're in, you're in trouble. Come on, y'all. And all of this is a part of what? The wrath of God. Y'all say amen. amen. Come on, everybody, say amen. amen. But I want you to know that anger that is ignited, it doesn't just start down in hell. It starts here on earth. Somebody ought to say amen. But then you look at and say, Lord, help me. Come on, you say, Lord, help me. Why is God's anger so fierce? It is because of sin. And in our text today, it's because of Israel's sin. But I want to talk about America. I want to talk about the sins of the day as well. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, we just read, we're talking about his fast kindle uh, and shall burn to the Lord's head. He gives us more information. And, and God had already told Israel what he would do if they did wrong. Verse 23, he talked about heaping mischiefs upon them. That means bringing, allowing damage and hurt. And I know folks are always say, God is a good God. God is a loving God. He's a kind God. And he is a loving God. He's a kind God. But I told you, he's full of emotions. Amen. Amen. God can become angry. And he does become angry. And listen, don't listen to these folks that want to tell you, uh, that he's so loving, he's so, he's so kind, he'll never send destruction. The devil is alive. Because in the word of God, he said, I heap mischiefs upon you. That's damage, that's hurt. He said in verse 23 that he would spend his arrows upon them. I just preached last week about Ahab, who tried to disguise himself, had his battle gear on. And a man just shot an arrow in there. He wasn't. He wasn't shooting at anybody, but when an arrow fell, it fell through the cracks of the armor to take Ahab out, and it was because God was angry with him. This scripture here says that he would spin his arrows upon them, that his sword would destroy both young men and the virgin, the suckling, those are babies, also the man of gray hairs, that he would scatter them into the corner. Meaning that he would disperse the nation of Israel everywhere. Now that verse there in Deuteronomy chapter 32, how he would disperse them, this happened hundreds of years before this text of 2 Chronicles. God's word is true. Why don't you just repeat that God's word is true? Word is true. Come on, say it again. God's word is true. Word is true. I want you to know what is going on here. And even when we look at today's sign, I see God heaping mischiefs and spinning his arrows on the world today. Look at what we got. Rising food costs. It costs you to eat now. Some of y'all have to leave the T-bone alone and go back to the neck bone. The neck bone and pinto bean are got high now. I went to Kroger the other day, Walmart wanted to play, come out with four sacks yeah. over $50. What'd you say? It's getting ridiculous, you all. Yeah. Rising food costs. Yeah. How about this gasoline that you got to put in your car? You, 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 you can't do it in a jaw riding now. <laughs> you know, you get in the car and just ride and look at the, you know, look at the scene. You can't afford it. Oh, Thank God that it's coming down a little bit. Mm -hmm. We got an unstable economy. Yeah. It's wishy-washy. Yeah. You don't know what's coming up next. How about COVID-19? Yeah. Yeah. That has brought much havoc on this world. And now they're talking about the monkeypox. Oh, Y'all yeah. say amen. amen. Instability among the nations. Ukraine, amen. War is in Ukraine. And now China is talking about fighting mm -hmm. Taiwan. You young men, I'm a Greenville High product. I used to teach history over there at Greenville High. And, and I, I encourage y'all to watch the news and find out what is going on. Why, why is it that everybody's upset about China might be invading Taiwan? Taiwan produces about 90 to 95% of the chips that go in the computers, that go in the cars. 
that, that operate a lot of the technology you, you need. And so China get a, a hold of it you, and they decide to stop the computer chip from coming this way. Uh, your life could change drastically. And let me tell y'all this, the, the United States and South Korea and Japan, they're not going to sit back idly and allow these folks to invade. And so what that could do, if they do go after Taiwan, that could lead us into World War Three. And if there is a World War Three, you won't have the, the, the type of armor and warfare that they fought in World War One, and you got to World War Two. They they dropped the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki over there in Japan. But the the bombs they got now gone from the nuclear to to hydrothermal bombs, and now this stuff they got now, hey man, that they can shoot on you now. It is a thousand times worse than what we had in the 1940s. This is serious business. That's why I tell the saints all, all the time: you better become prayer warriors. You need to be praying. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. But the reason all of this stuff is happening, and even I talked about the year, talked about the instability of our economy. Just two to three years ago, we were doing good in America. Yes. Everybody was working. Gas prices were low. Hey man, we had money to spend. But look at where we are now. You, you need to know there is a God that's in charge. Hallelujah. And when you're angry with him, all he has to do is move his hand of protection back. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about a God that can speak to the ocean and the waters will move where he can move. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody hit me tell him, thank you. I'm talking about a God that, you know, people always talk about speaking into the atmosphere. Y'all better be careful about this speaking into the atmosphere, but I do know somebody that's speaking to the atmosphere. Yeah. And things will change. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Y'all say amen. Yeah. When Israel was fighting a, a battle before this time period, under the days of Joshua, God sent the hornets. Here we got the GHS hornets here today. God sent the literal hornets in to fight against his enemy. God is somebody. I say, God is somebody. Lift your hand and tell God, thank you. Come on and tell God, thank you. So what Hezekiah was doing, let me check this out. What Hezekiah was doing, Hezekiah was trying to get these folk to reform. Trying to get these folk to come back to God. Come back in his grace. Come back in his favor. But when he sent the letters, notice how the people received them. We didn't read this scripture. Verse 10 tells us, they laughed them to scorn and mocked him. Isn't that what people are doing today when the preacher proclaimed the word of the Lord, warning them not to do certain things because of the wrath of God, his wrath to come. Today, people are laughing at the preacher, laughing at what the church says that you should and should not do. People make fun of the church when we tell them that God requires a righteous life. It is time to seek the Lord. People laugh when we continue to remind them that Jesus is coming again. He's coming for a blood washed church. He's coming for a prepared people. Why don't you tell God thank you? King Hezekiah made the appeal to these people, particularly notice the scripture said, who had escaped out of the hand of the Syrians. He told them, don't act like your fathers before you who sinned against God. Don't be stiff-necked. Don't be hard-headed like your dads. Serve the Lord. Listen to this. Serve the Lord that his fierceness, his consuming fire, his wrath be turned away from you. Don't laugh at the word of the Lord. Don't laugh at the preacher. Right. And I'm telling you, just as Hezekiah, uh, Hezekiah said to those folks, don't act like the other folks. He told them, don't act like their dad. Yeah. It might be your dad. Mm. It might be your mom. Come on, y'all. But don't act like your friends. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. 
You know they're going in the wrong direction. You know that they're, that they're going this, into, into darkness. They, they're going into something that will, that will get them in trouble. You don't have to run hand in hand with that person. You don't have to go where they go. You know they're going down the wrong path. Sooner or later, you're going to be caught. Sooner or later, you're going to run into a dead end, into a hole, into trouble. Don't act like the other folk. Y'all ought to tell him thank you. Y'all ought to tell him thank you. What Hezekiah was trying to get the folks to see that remnant that had not been killed. And let me tell you how I, 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 I kind of mentioned this. I, I'm going to get a little confused when I mentioned this in the morning. Had I mentioned this in the message today, but the Assyrians were so cruel until they would cut people's ears off. They, they would poke their eyes out, cut your leg off. They roasted some of their captives over slow fire like a hog. They killed innocent babies. They, they impaled individuals. In other words, run a javelin or a spear through your stomach. All the way through your back and then put it in the ground and you'll be dangling in the air as you die. They skinned some of the peeled the little skin of them. They, you know, it was bad enough to defeat you in war, but then they would come around. Now, now what I just told you is not in the Bible, but you know I'm a history person. So it's in the history of the Assyrians. And so that it, was, it was bad enough that they had to feed you, but then they had to torture you. And, and these folks... The Hezekiah sent letters to them. They were the remnant. They were the people that, that, that God had blessed to live. He said, now, he, he has blessed you. I'm putting it in my word now. He has blessed you. Don't you think it's time to turn back to God? I'm telling you today that God has been good to you. How many of y'all know that he's been good to you? Many of us are survivors of COVID-19. Here I am. I'm a survivor. That first wave of COVID-19 was worse than what we're dealing with now. The headaches that I had to go through, the pain I had to go through. And, and while I was suffering in isolation, folk died day and night. Hey Amen. Many folk that I, that I was acquainted with, many preachers that I knew, died in that time. But oh, I'm yet here. God has been good to me. God has been good to every one of you. Y'all ought to say amen. And just as Hezekiah made the appeal, why not? Why not turn to the Lord? I make the same appeal to you today. Why not serve the Lord? Why not turn your heart to the Lord? Even to we got a, a sizable group of young people here today. I want to tell y'all that living for the Lord and living saved, amen, is not a boring life. Sometimes folk want to make it boring. I tell young people, you can be saved and still have fun. Y'all yeah. come on and say amen. amen. It's just that your fun, amen, is not of the world, is not of the devil. You can have fun in Jesus. Amen. And, and I, tell, I tell young people all the time, I don't expect you to act like I do. Y'all would call me old-fashioned. Well, I, I don't expect y'all to dress like me. I, I, I like to wear suits. That's just me. Come on. You know, I, and I do certain things because I am older. Amen. But listen, listen. You can live saved and yet enjoy this world. Amen. Come on, y'all. As a matter of fact, if you're saved, you can enjoy this world even better. Amen. Because certain headaches and certain troubles that will come upon you, you will never have that problem. Amen. You'll never have to go through that. Come on, y'all. I'll give you an example. And I'm not trying to indict anybody. I'm not trying to make fun about it. I'm not trying to put anybody down by this. But listen, listen. I have three children. And all three of my children by my wife. I don't have any other children. So therefore, I don't have any baby mama drama. I don't have to have to worry about somebody calling and hanging the phone up. I don't have to worry about child support. Come on, y'all. Now, I'm not putting anybody down that perhaps are going through those things. Because if you have gone through that, you yet can live a life now that's leading to God. Amen. Amen. But I, what I'm just trying to tell you that if you don't go there, and if you live a saved life as a young person, you can avoid a whole 
whole lot of trouble. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. Come on and say, Lord, help me. Lord, come on and say, Lord, help me. Lord, he was trying to tell him, come on and serve the Lord. Come on and live the Lord. God has been good to you. And I'm saying this to you likewise. At the witness of all that God has done to us. All of his blessings. Why not serve the Lord? Why not avoid his wrath? Why not avoid his fierceness? Amen. God's wrath is in the land now. It may not necessarily be his active wrath. It might be his passive wrath. What's the difference? I've talked about this before. In the Old Testament, amen, God was, God was known that when he got angry, he might send a thunderbolt your way, take you out. Uh, Israel, got, Israel made a man one time, and God commanded poisonous serpents to come out of the holes, and they bit the folks, and folks died from the venom. Y'all come on and say amen. There were other things that God did personally because he was angry. The reason you don't see as much of his active wrath today is because Jesus came, died on the cross, paid the penalty. And now we're in the time of grace where God's mercy is extended a little bit more. But guess what? God yet gets angry. He yet has a fierceness of his wrath because what God does now is passive. Passive wrath. Oh, I, I, I explained a little bit earlier. All God's got to do is move his hand back. Do you not know in order for you to walk in this church today, God had to speak to your spirit, your soul this morning and say, Leah, you didn't just get up out of the bed. It was not the alarm clock that woke you up. Amen. God had to say live so you can hear the alarm clock. If you think it's a alarm clock that woke you up this morning, I dare you to go to Redmond's film home and take an alarm clock and see what kind of movement you're going to get back there with those caskets. God spoke and said live. Thank you, Jesus. You're blessed of the Lord today. God has been good to you, but it's passive wrath. Oh, all God has to do, some of us, we, 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 we get in our cars and we drive foolishly. Yeah. Amen. Y'all say amen. amen. One of the biggest issues we have right now, and it's against the law, we drive it and we're doing this. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't have our attention on what we're doing, but it's the Lord that keep you out of harm's way. It's the Lord that, that keep the other person out of your lane and you out of his lane because you were distracted. But all God's got to do is move his hand of protection. And you can be gone just like that. Y'all all say amen. Y'all going to praise him for his blessing right now. Why don't you tell God thank you? It's time to seek the Lord. I say it's time to seek the Lord. I'm getting ready to wrap this up now. It's time. Heaven says it's time to seek the Lord. I'm talking to you who are troubled today. Somebody came here troubled in mind. You have no peace. Matter of fact, last night, the tears were streaming down your faces. Last night, some of you walked the floor as you were agitated. No peace in your mind. No peace. Joy. I'm talking to somebody now that's been in constant sorrow. I'm talking to somebody now who, who is angry and you don't even know why. You want to pretend that you're happy. You want folk to think you are the life of the party. You want folk to think that you're popular wherever you are. But they don't know the story. They don't know your story. Because I hear the Lord speaking to me now. And the Lord says that many times late at night when you can't sleep, thank you, Jesus. Here you are upset and anxious, troubled mind, and you really want things to be better. You want to feel better. But because of where you are and because of what you're doing, you have no peace on the inside. But I hear the Lord saying that you don't have to suffer from anxiety. Yeah. Why don't you tell God thank you? Thank you. you? You don't have to be depressed. Can't y'all see there's a spirit 
of depression that's in the land. I'm concerned about folks. I'm concerned about what COVID-19 has done to us. We were locked up behind closed doors for a long time. And God did not make you that way. God made you as a sociable creature. He made you, amen, that you would give love and receive love. He made you that you be friendly so that you have friends and that you have relationships with family members. But we have been cut off from one another. And it has done something to the minds of the folks. Why do you think the folks are shooting and fighting like they are now? Why do you think there's an increase, amen, of mass murders in America? There is a spirit of anxiety. There is a spirit of of depression but I come here today to tell you you don't have to be depressed today God want to touch your mind he want to touch your heart you don't have to take the pills and take your life you don't have to take the knife and cut your wrist you don't have to take a 30 or a 45 and put it to your brains and shoot them out the Lord is saying as he said in Amos 5 and 4 seek ye me and ye shall live remember my seven years what happens when you seek the Lord God is telling you to seek me and ye shall live in other words chase after God pursue after God in your time of going to the job and going to, to, to school and doing everything else take some time to talk to the Lord take some time to read your Bible take some time to come to church see the Lord and ye shall live. Lift your hand and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. Somebody, y'all help me to breathe by saying somebody, somebody is seeking the wrong thing. You need to stop seeking the wrong people. Stop seeking the wrong things. Stop seeking fulfillment in the drugs. I know they, they told you ha, that the marijuana won't do anything, ha, but the devil is a lie. Ha, that weed and marijuana that folks are smoking, ha, it is killing the brain cells. Ha, and every brain cell you kill ha, cannot be replaced. Ha, I need all my brain cells. Ha, I need what God has given me. Ha, not only that they tell you it's not addictive, ha, but it's a gateway drug. Ha, many folks that are that are strung out ha, on LSD and the heroin ha, and all the other addictive drugs, ha, they start with a little weed. Ha, come on and tell God, thank you. Ha, don't try to find fulfillment ha, in the drugs. Ha, don't try to find fulfillment ha, in the alcohol. Ha, I know y'all talking about bud ha, and bud light, ha, but this liquor and beer ha, is destroying your liver. Ha, it's destroying your kidneys. Ha, it's destroying your heart. Ha, you don't need it. Ha, stop ha, seeking fulfillment ha, in popularity. Ha, stop ha, seeking fulfillment ha, in sexual activity. Ha, your sexual activities ha, will only last a few minutes. Ha, it might be just a few seconds. Ha, come on and tell God thank you. Ha, but you will endure ha, a lifetime of horror. What are you talking about, preacher? Trouble comes after a while with diseases. They don't talk about this on the news. They don't talk about this like they ought to talk about. We've been teaching our young folks to wait until you get married. Come on and tell God thank you. All kind of diseases out there. I'm just being real, y'all. If you've never heard before, I'm a real preacher. Ha. I tell it like it is. Ha. Not only diseases, ha. but after a while, 
God. Here come the child support I talked about. Here come the baby mama drama. Upset with you. Had a baby with her. And you decided she wasn't the one. You start dating another woman. Even getting married. And now she busting the windshield. Putting sugar in the tank. Scratching the car up. Come on and tell God thank you. Oh, seek the Lord. Come on and say it. Seek the Lord. Come on and tell God thank you. I've been looking at what the woman does. But then it comes to the brother and the boys. The young men. Ladies, seek the Lord. Not that good looking boy. Come on and shout yes. I say not that good looking boy. Because if you seek him. After a while. When you get tired of his playboy ways. When you get tired of who he is. And find Mr. Right. That young man. The devil might rise up in him. And he said if I can't have her. Nobody will. That's the type of stuff we're dealing with now. That's the type of stuff we're going through now. Seek the Lord. Seek him. The Bible says seek him. And ye shall live. God wants you to live. Y'all help me to preach by saying live. Come on, shout live. He wants you to live. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to have a sound mind. He wants you to have good health. He wants you to live in a good house. I'm talking about having a family where there's peace, where there's tranquility. Why don't you tell God thank you? Come on and tell God thank you. I'm closing, I'm closing. But the word of the Lord says, seek him, and ye shall live. Another scripture says, seek him that maketh the seven stars and the Orient. In other words, God made the constellation. Seek him, and turn it the shadow of death into morning. In other words, when trouble does come your way, and it look like you're in the shadow of death. And David talked about the valley of the shadow of death. When it look like you're going to die. God will extend his hand and just pick you up and pull you out of your trouble. God know how to make your enemies be your footstool and make your enemies be at peace with you. God know how to turn your life around. Won't he do it, saints? Won't he do it, saints? Won't he fix our problems? Won't he take care of our business? Come on and tell God, thank you. I'm so glad to see Mother Ollie here. This, this church mother that's here today. We missed her. She, she's not as well as she has been in the past. We're so glad to see you, Mother Ollie. Amen. And I remember your testimony years ago. You said you had a debt with seeds. And, and, and I think it was, I don't know, maybe 5000 but it was way up there. And you said you don't know how it was paid, but God paid it all. She had this big debt and don't know how it was paid. But look at God. That's the type of stuff when God says live, God is saying, if you, if you come under my wing, I'll take care of you. Even in the, the darkest of times, even when the storms are raging. Do you not know because he's Jehovah Shalom, which means that he's my God, my people? There will be peace in the midst of the storm. Thank you, Jesus. Things are bad all around. But you can, you can just wrap back and smile and fold your arm because I'm in the hand of God. I'm in the arms of the Almighty. Say amen, somebody. Come on and say amen. Seek the Lord. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. I talked about praying a moment ago. And seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And will forgive their sins and heal the land. Somebody need healing today. You need healing of your mind. You came to church. I got, I'm getting ready to have you stand. I'm going to pray. 
You came to church and you were troubled at the mind. You hadn't told nobody your situation. You hadn't, you, you hadn't revealed it. But you're troubled at mind. You were disgusted. Like to have an anxiety attack. But God is saying, I want to heal your mind. I want to give you peace of mind. I, I, I want to turn your midnight into morning. Hallelujah. I want to bring you out of the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to stay in the valley. Hey, hallelujah. Did y'all hear me say, you don't have to stay in the valley. But while you're there, God will take care of you. But you don't have to stay there. God will bring you out of the valley. In other words, God will bring you out of the low places of your life. Thank you, Jesus. We, we sing the song sometimes when I was down and out. God made a way for me. In other words, he brought me out of that downward position. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. Come on and say amen. amen. That little song that the choir sometimes, God wants to heal you. Everywhere. Everywhere. I've talked to some hurting folks here. Thank you, Jesus. Did y'all hear us? I talked to the hurting folks again. Oh, yeah. But God want to heal you. Everywhere it hurts. Why don't you say amen? amen? I've got to close the message. But to short it up, because time is out. Listen to me. Listen to me. The remnant, there were those that laughed at Hezekiah, mocked him, but there was a group that came. And the group that came, they joined in. As they begin to establish what they need to do. As they begin to do what God wanted them to do. And when they got there, they couldn't even have the Passover on the day that they were supposed to have it on. They had to have it a month later. Amen. But God knew their heart. God knew what they were trying to accomplish. They put away their idols. They had been worshiping idol gods. They threw away that stuff that God said was idolatry. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And when they got ready to perform the ceremonies, the Bible said that they were ashamed. The Levites were ashamed. When they got ready for the burnt offering, I said, oh my goodness. A lot of folks today are not, a, not ashamed about anything. Amen. I got to close, y'all. But I want to say this. If you get to the point where you're not ashamed to do wrong, you're in trouble. When you get to the point, you can't feel nothing. And sometimes I wonder about this. I say, I preach, and I preach, and like, like that's the thing that won't change. Some individuals that won't change. And the Lord often reminds me, the heart has been hardened. You, you become hard and stiff-necked. And it makes it a little bit harder. Not that God can't do what he want to do. He's waiting on you to yield to him. The, the word yield was in one of the scriptures we read. You have to yield to him. But when you keep going on your own way, you become hard or hardened. Let me talk about hardened criminals that are in jail. Those individuals, it's harder to uh, rehabilitate them, to get them on the right path as opposed to a, a youngster who just goes to jail, just got in some trouble. Listen, listen, you don't want your heart to become hardened. But if, if, if you get to the point where the gospel message does not touch you, it does not trouble you, and you can do what you want to do, and you just keep doing, and it doesn't phase you, it doesn't bother you. You are in trouble. You are in trouble. Yes. Friend, you could die today. And what are you going to say to the Lord if you die and you're not prepared to meet him? You're not promised tomorrow. Are y'all listening to me? I'm trying to finish this up. But, but you're not promised tomorrow. The Lord said the same. Next Saturday, we'll be attending the film. And I want y'all to continue to pray for Superintendent Curry. Yes. And Sister Curry. Two of his sons were killed in an accident. Young men. Young men. Died. And my heart goes out to them. To the family. But it's, it's something to remind us of how frail our lives are and how we could be here today and gone tomorrow. Stand with everybody. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let us song music. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What happens 
when you see the Lord. What happened? What happened? I invite you today to seek Him with a whole heart. I invite you today to really seek the Lord. If you're not saved today, if you don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins, it is time to seek the Lord. Jesus loved us so until he left heaven. His throne of glory came down into this world, wrapped himself in the flesh of a human being, born of the Virgin Mary. He was born to die for the sins of the world. See, Jesus died on the cross so that you so that you could be saved. Jesus died on the cross so that you could go to heaven. Jesus died on the cross to turn that fierce wrath of God away from you. But when you neglect to accept Jesus in your heart, trouble will yet come your way. I invite you to seek the Lord. I invite you to come to the Lord and let him save you. Let him change your situation. Let him change your life. Can God do it? Yes, he can. Does God want to do it? Yes, he does. He loves you. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus, to die on the cross. Bow your heads. Close your eyes for a moment. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. I challenge you to look within your own heart. I challenge you to look at where you are in life and where do you stand before God? That is, what type of life are you living? Are you living a life that's pleasing to God? A life that you can honestly say, I am seeking Him. Or do you know honestly that there are some undesirable things that are in your life? Undesirable traits. And I really need help from the Lord. I really need His blessings. I really need his favor. If you cannot say in all honesty that you're saved, that God has forgiven you of your sins, if you cannot say this honestly, I want you unashamedly to walk from behind that pew and come down to this altar. I want to pray for you. We're going to have the urges to help us out. We are going to practice some, some means of social distancing. But if you are not able to say it all honestly, honestly, say that I am ready to meet the Lord. Step out from behind the pew and walk down to this altar. Come down, come down. Don't wait on anybody else. Because one day, you're going to face the Lord by yourself. You're going to have to stand before his throne and give an account of your life. Nobody will be able to stand with you. You will be all alone. God is going to bring up everything you've done in this life. Think about it now. Everything I've done in this life is coming up again. But if you let Jesus into your heart, if you, if you let the Lord uh, take over your life and you live a life that's pleasing Him, the Lord said it in so many words that what you've done, I won't even remember anymore. I put it into a sea of forgiveness. That's the type of God that we serve. And some of us who are saved now, some of us were, were devils. We did all kinds of things. But look at us now. The Lord has delivered us. All right? I'm going to pray with these individuals, these men who are standing here. Come on, brothers. Close your eyes. You that are standing up at the altar, standing in the aisle. Lift your hand toward heaven and come on, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for letting me live. I thank you for letting me hear the word on today. Lord Jesus, I realize sin is in my life. And with sin, I cannot please you. Nor come to heaven one day. Lord Jesus, I don't want to die. Go to a burning hell. I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me. Come on, mean it from the heart. I'm asking you, Lord, 
to forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've done. I'm sorry, Lord, for the words I've spoken, for the places I've gone to. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my heart. Save me, Lord. It's all right for everybody to say, save me, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to really mean it. Save me, Lord. Wash me in your blood. Touch my mind. Touch my heart. Lord, if you help me, I'm going to live right. I'm going to do what is right. Now tell him thank you. Come on, everybody, tell him thank you. Come on, tell God thank you. All right, brothers, if you meant what you said, God has heard your cry. He has forgiven you. And I tell people this. Uh, come to the altar as many times you need to. But listen, listen, when you fully surrender and give up, there's going to be a change that's going to be so remarkable until you want to tell the world about it. While we're yet standing, while we're yet standing, I thank God for this group of young men here. Give them another hand. I want, to, I want to pray a special prayer for you all, right where you are. Let's do that. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this football team that have come today, these coaches that have brought them. I pray, God, that you keep every one of them in the name of Jesus. Keep them, Lord, while they walk the hallways of Green Behind. And Lord, we've already prayed, and we pray again that this be a good year for Green Behind. We pray, God, that it be a year where things are safe. And Lord, where you don't let the gunman, the madman, come in with a gun and start shooting. Help now, God. Help now, God. Even in this COVID-19 crisis, I pray your protection upon all of them, Lord. And Lord, these are football players. And so they're going to go on the football field and Lord, they, they will use force and force will come at them. And sometimes there are accidents and there are mishaps. But I pray that you keep every one of them, Lord. Don't let them suffer, uh, Lord, an injury that can take their life. Don't let them suffer an injury that, that can stop them from walking and being productive in life. Keep them on God and protect them, Lord. Keep them on the highways, Lord, where they have to travel, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we even pray for their success, Lord. And the campaign that these coaches have put together, Lord, even for this year. We pray, God, that you would even bless them in that manner. But, Lord, I pray that each and every one of these young men will know you as a personal Savior. In the name of Jesus. That they take the heart, Lord, that it's time to seek the Lord. We thank you, God, for them coming to church today. And Lord, I pray that this word has been preached, that it will be a help to them, that it will be an encouragement to them. Lord, that they be the athletes that they need to be. Lord, that they will be the students and do well in school this year. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Clap your hands and give God a prayer. God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. We thank God for all of you that are here. And uh, we're going to receive the announcements and we're going to receive our offering. If you have an offering, we still are not marching as we have done in the past, but if you have an offering, uh, little value, you know what we do on Sundays, our tithes, our offering. Let me remind you of building fund. Amen. You can place it in the envelope if you don't have one. The urchins are going to come in just a moment to receive uh, whatever you'd like to give to our business, we're grateful that you're here. You're not on the obligation to give. No, you're not on the obligation to give. But if you want to share, uh, we certainly are going to say thank you. All right, if you would just hold up your offering, they're coming. We're going to pray the blessings on our offering as we dismiss. We get ready to go home in just a moment. Get ready to go home. And there are hands. Some are given electronically. I find that quite a few people now are given electronically and that's good too that helps in that helps in many ways in many ways you can give electronically you 
thankful for you giving them. Those that have pressed your cell phone and have given it electronically, we thank you. We thank you for your giving. This is a part of worship. This is a part of us blessing the Lord. The announcement is here. Yeah, she's coming. All right. Our uh, announcer, as they finish, can you all listen? Uh, don't, don't want you to be distracted. We got a couple of changes this week. Got, got a couple of changes I need you to hear. Okay, go ahead. All right. It's not on? It's saying it is. Ah. Announcements. This evening at 5.30, we have testimony service. Come and be blessed. We will be here for one hour. Tuesday at 5.30, we have prayer and youth Bible study. Wednesday at 5.30, we have prayer and adult Bible study. This Thursday, there will be a change for the prayer time. Prayer will be at 6.30 a.m. in the morning instead of 5.30 p.m. Sister Debbie and Sister Lee would like to send a reminder that we are now accepting closed drop-offs every Sunday after church for our giveaway, which is in September. We thank you for your cooperation. If you wanted to send a card to Mother Maxwell, this is the last Sunday to do so. Sister Lee will be mailing them off on tomorrow. And lastly, um, the committee is asking that we show our shower of love and support for our annual First Lady Day by the first Sunday in September, which will be September the 4th. As always, we appreciate all that you do. And the offering that is being asked is $50, but please just do what you can. Thanks. All right, let's say amen. 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 I hope that you were paying attention. What are we gonna do this evening? We're gonna do a test concert. We did it back in, what, June? And we were really blessed. We were really blessed by the testimony. So, and listen, listen, we're not going to be on Facebook. Sometimes you don't, have, you don't need to be on Facebook. Everybody don't want to be on Facebook. I want you to no feel Zoom. free. And so the writer saying, no Zoom this time. So we need you to come. We don't want to be here one hour. Let's tell of the goodness of God. We're going to pray, rejoice in the Lord for his goodness. Also, we know Tuesday and Wednesday what we do in terms of the prayer and the Bible studies. But on this Thursday, uh, look like the evening prayer, look like a running some difficult sometimes. So let's we're gonna try this, we're gonna try a 6.30 prayer. Most of you going to work anyway. Am I right about that? So we're gonna do that on Zoom. Zoom on, no Facebook. Zoom and the the uh, line, the, the line that's connected to Zoom. While you're getting ready, eating, whatever you're doing, turn it on. Come on, Zoom. And we're going to be praying as people get ready to go to work. The rest of us start our day. If you're not working, retired, get up that morning and let's pray together. Is that all right? We're going to try this out. Because I think that might work better. All right. God bless you. Lord, keep you. Anything else? Yes. We want to invite the, the coaches and the football team to our kitchen. For a little refreshment uh, before they leave. Are you taking pictures? Y'all be trying to get pictures on you. Yes, just okay. right after. Right after we dismiss it. They want to get a picture of y'all coming to be with it. And then they got refreshments for you in the fellowship hall. We're standing together. We're standing together. Dear God in heaven, we thank you and we praise you. We give you glory and honor. I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for your blessings that have been poured out in this service. Thank you for the offering that has been received. I pray, God, that you will bless every giver. And, Lord, there may be persons who didn't have but have desire to give. So we pray for that. We pray that you bless them for that desire to give. God, as we go to our homes this evening, we pray that you will take us there safely and bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.